Hey guys, welcome to another episode of El Jefe Shop Shop. This week we're buying more garbage from a distance. Alright, so I hate starting videos off in the computer room, but I was on night shift last night, so it's kind of the afternoon now. Uh, the night before, I was staying up late to prepare for night shift, so I thought I'd stay up till 2 or 3 o'clock. Um, in that time, got on the computer, was looking at auctions, as you do, uh, salvage auctions. Put in a very lowball offer on a car, and just got an email that I have won. So, I need to go to Mount Gambia and pick it up, which is about a 5 or 6 hour drive. So that's entertaining. Let's go to Mount Gambia. Alright, I got the trailer ready for tomorrow. Got the payment for the trailer for hire. So just at Dale's now, gonna drop that off. And then I'll go swap cars with Dad. Alright, good morning. It is 4.15. Em's just grabbing the last of her stuff and then we're gonna head onto the road and drive down to Mount Gambia, about five hours drive, uh, 450 k's or something like that. Try and get down there, load this car up, grab a few other things while we're there, breakfast and a something for Dale's dad, and then turn around and drive back. So I haven't got a tripod for the camera, so there won't be any like road trip footage or anything, but I'll try and get him to fill some stuff out the window, see if anything cool happens. But other than that, it's just a pretty routine drive and grab and drive back. So if anything interesting happens, I'll update you as we go, but see you in Mount Gambia. Small town checklist, Jeff. Church, pub. I can't remember what else is on there. Dodgy looking servo. A dodgy looking servo. Or a building that was a servo but clearly isn't. A building that was a bank that clearly isn't. And then it's got to either be lawn bowls or golf. And a um, cemetery. Okay. We're on the lookout. Stuck on 40 again. We are two minutes away. We're in Mount Gambia. I'm gonna pull up on this yard of some description and load this car up. All right, so we made it to Mount Gambia. The car yard is like two buildings that way and we just have an OTR. So we'll fill the car up, we'll grab the car and then I think we're gonna go grab some breakfast and then there's a couple of little shops we want to look into, so we'll have a look at those, and then we'll start making our way back. Alright, here it is, a Honda CRV. It's the year after Emily's, but it has roof racks, side steps, rear tyre cover, and a few other bits and pieces for her car. So, that, and it has the K24 in it, but it is the worst one. But it has the all drive system in it, and it has a full interior and all that sort of stuff. And the lady that's helping me out has just gone to go get the keys and the jump starter, so apparently it drives. So hopefully get this loaded on the trailer in just a minute. Front bumper is now a rear bumper. So pretty neat on the inside, it's all leather. Another front seats, it's got like 250,000 k's or something, but overall, it's not too bad. Roof racks, which probably don't have a key, which is only fun. Manuel, side steps. Some of the black trims that M's car has in silver, so swap them over. Tires have decent treads, so we can put them on M's car as well. So, let's get this thing home and dig into it then. Will it start? I haven't got much call in there, so I've got to be quick. Alright, we got it all strapped down. 
Everything's ready to go. The bonnet is actually clipped. Doesn't look like it, but it is clipped down. Look at this bonus. Heaps of coins. Woo! Every time Dad lends me his car. Every time. All right, I'm taking this as a bit of uh, insurance. So I'm as far forward as I can be in this park. This tire is on the line. And this tire is on the gutter and I'm in the line at the back. I don't know how I'm supposed to park any better than that, but that's where we're at. And we're gonna go to lunch and then probably look at this cartoon, uh, what do you call it? Comic book store and arcade. And then there's some other places and there's Emily. I wish there was like a good pie shop around here. Oh, that one seems okay. So if you're ever in Mount Gambia, Kaboom Family Entertainment, they have an absolutely amazing collection of Pokemon stuff. Come and look at it. All right, so you can't stop at Mount Gambia without looking at the Blue Lake. It's very pretty. We need to get out of here. We're gonna get home. And it's about to rain, so we're driving home in the rain, I'm sure. All right, so Emily's just on the phone, so I'll give her a minute while we've got reception. Just check these straps. Hopefully nothing's come loose. Nice and solid. Still looks like an ugly 30 CRV. Solid. I did notice that this um, spare wheel cover has a dent in it, which is a bit annoying because it's plastic or fiberglass. I was kind of hoping that it would get away with it. And that is one of the things we were kind of hoping for, so it's a bit of a bummer, but I'll keep it anyway, and if we want to get it fixed up later, we can. Um, this badge is missing, but it's in the center console. These lights are different to what it's on M's car. So these are 2004, hers is 2003. So we could put those across. Just depends what M wants to do, because it is her car. But the side steps, I think the other one has one of the plastic bits are broken, so... It's not so bad. The indicators I noticed are clear on this and they are orange on M's car. So we might change that as well. But one main thing that we didn't realize, I'll jump up in here, one handed. It's got heated seats. So these leather seats are heated, which is pretty sweet. The only problem is because it's a manual, it doesn't have the armrests on the side, which we both really like. So. Unfortunately, we probably have to get a Armrest Auto 2004 to get the um, heated seats for M's car. But it is an option. Then we've got the original radio, which can go probably in the bin. Um, this window is smashed, which is good because I was actually going to cut the roof off in case we decide to do something with this because Emily's does not have one. Maybe down the track. And then we've got a few books and all sorts of stuff, so I'll just have a quick squeeze through and if I find anything interesting, I'll update you. Another interesting thing is, I think in Emily's car, this is actually bolted to the driver's seat. And the cup holders are here, and this is back here. So that's kind of weird. Don't know if it makes any difference. It also came with books, in a little Honda pouch, so that's kind of cool. So I'll go through these, we'll get him to go through these, and we'll keep going on the road. All right, Emily twisted my arm. Look at it, it's all twisted. We're going through the narrow court caves. Let's go have a look. There's all the energy you had a minute ago. There we go. Look how stoked this bloke is. Look at him go. These are the creepiest things I've seen in a while. Look at them. Creepy. Diorama. What are we doing, Emily? Going to the cave. This cave is called the Stick Tomato Cave. So let's go have a look. Ooh. Caves. Pretty cool. It's not completely underground cave because that's where we just came in down the stairs. So see how much deeper we can go. So there's supposed to be automatic lights in here. And we've just been walking around in the dark around that way. But this bit's turned on, so we'll just keep going.
Emily's complaining about the roof being too low. <laughs> I but and the tallest I have ever been. Emily's found a crevasse. Could you crevasse down there? It's pretty deep. It's kind of deep. This is probably gonna be horrible footage because it's too dark. It opens up a fair bit. That's pretty cool. Let's go down there and have a look. There's a hole to nowhere and another hole to nowhere. It's pretty big. It's way bigger than I expected. That's what she said. That is not what she said. <laughs> Emily. Emily pointed out that. Whatever that is. Something to do with Stranger Things, I think. I hope no one's got trypophobia. Because there's holes in the roof. Lots of holes. It's really creepy. This place just keeps going. Keeps going and keeps going. And if you go that way, it gets really short. It didn't echo at all. This is really comforting. There's a nice big crack in this rock. And then we've put it back together with a bit of perspex. I hope that's not what that's there for, but that crack is pretty good and holds on that whole big chunk. And there's another one over here. Look at that big chunk. And the little attached bit. <laughs> and then holes in the roof. Super cool little cave. And just opens up to the stairs again. Obviously the green bit is where all the rain comes through. And the rest of it's pretty dead, but super cool. What a nice little rest stop. There we go, we're back on the stairs. It's down there. So if you come to Naracourt, this is tomato stalk or something. Stick tomato cave, not tomato stick. All right, so we're just leaving the narrow court caves. Got like four hours to go home. So let's try and smash out a bunch of this distance. All right, so we left the narrow court caves. We just stopped at a servo. We got 359 kilometers to go, four hours and 23 minutes. And it is currently 20 to four. So we're gonna be home late, but that's all right. It'll be fun. I'll just unload the trailer and take the trailer off and then I can take this thing to work. Swap back the cars with Dad and then take the trailer back tomorrow. See you when I get home. Alright, so we made it to Talon Bend. Just parked there. We're gonna go get some Hungry Jacks at the OTR. And that's the Bend Motorsport Park right there. So we'll go get some HJs and then we'll hit the road again. Road again. It is quarter past six. Do you wanna sing again? No. Alright, it's quarter to nine. Just got home, so I need to unload this thing. So I'll take the straps off, chuck the ramps out. Park it over there next to the Camry, take the trailer off, shut the gate, empty the car, have a shower, go to bed. So, go work in the morning, so we need to make this kind of quick. Let's see if I can roll start this thing off the trailer. I'm gonna get Emily to give me a push, so hopefully it's all good. We shall see. Alright, no pop start but it's off the trailer. Sweet. All right, there it is off the trailer next to the Camry. Car trailer, undo that guy, empty that guy and shut the gates. All right, I'm gonna do all that now and I will catch you guys tomorrow afternoon. $10.35. I'm getting a frappe on the way home from work. All right, it's a new day. So I thought I'd come out and have a look at this CRV. So I've just dumped the bumper out here and the grill. So that grill is slightly different to what Emily's got on her car. Um, one tab is broken, but we'll see if she wants that to update the front of her car. I just went to lift up this carpet and it made a hell of a noise. Guys, I don't know what that is, but someone spilt something disgusting. Um, so it's got the little table, which is great. It is all covered in muck. No spare wheel, which is a bit of a bummer. 
but it does have all of the um, jack and tools. So the Camry actually doesn't have a jack and tools, so I might just steal those and put them in the Camry, even though they are not Honda ones. We got the pin for the tow bar, and the split pin was in there, or the uh, R clip was in there, because this is actually not got a pin in it, but it will not come off. So that's entertaining. So I'm just going to have a dig around and see what else we can find. See what else is interesting, see what else is broken. And I'll catch you up if I find anything good. So jumping into the back seat, there's not much interesting back there. Um, Pokemon cards. So this is a theme deck of Pokemon cards. Which is pretty funny because I bought Pokemon cards for myself and for Dale when we were in Mankabia. So I'll crack that open and see what's in there. Alright, it's just a theme deck so there's nothing too exciting. Now there is a shiny Surfetched, which I'm assuming is the evolved form of Farfetched. So, free Pokemon cards is always good. Also found the Wheelnut key, which is nice. I didn't even realise this had lock nuts on it. So we got that for later. So let's jump over there and see what else we can find. Alright, not much interesting on the other side. I found one Magic the Gathering card, three rolls of tape, a map, a tiny little train, and 20 cents. Also, this car doesn't have lock nuts, so I don't know what this is off of. But the car doesn't have lock nuts, so I don't know why I have a lock nut key. Let's jump into the front and see if we can find anything else. Alright, nothing interesting on this side, just all the broken headlight that I threw in here. Um, the mats are actually pretty good, I don't know what ends are like, but there's a full set of floor mats, which is pretty nice. The back one looks really good, so I guess we could use those if her car doesn't have them. And then this stuff is a different shade of grey, which I'll show you later. Um, but these are dark grey, hers are like silver, so I could use those. I think these are silver in M's car, and these as well. So, could swap a few bits around, so we'll see how we go with that. I don't think there's any cubbies or hidey holes on that side, but I'll jump over there and have a look. Alright, nothing interesting on this side. However, there is a bit of mark on this seat, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, but we could swap all that into M's car, again, depends what she wants. It's all pretty tidy. Um, the steering wheel is probably just as bad as hers is, which is a bit of a pain. But the dash is actually different because it's an 04, not an 03. It's got a bit of a digital display on the bottom there. I was kind of hoping to find the key for the roof racks, but no luck. Unless the ignition key works, which would be amazing. It doesn't even fit. So that's a bad start. I'm going to have to try and get the locksmith out or something to get those off because we were hoping to keep those. Let's jump under the hood and see what's in there. All right, so I said earlier that I thought one of these was broken, but it turns out it's just a little bit of water. So these are actually in good condition, so we'll take those off and we can put them on M's car. Sweet. All right, under the bonnet, let's have a look at this crash damage. So I've hardly looked at it myself, so I'll have a bit of a, have a geese, a bit of a sticky beak, and then I'll report back. But on first inspection, that is all pretty, pretty munted. End of the chassis rail, the little chassis rail extension is bent, so I assume there's a fair bit of damage in there somewhere. All right, so this corner, is pretty bent obviously. Um, the headlight was held in with good intentions and some tiny little plastic brackets that were mostly broken anyway. So I don't think this is actually bent, which I thought it was originally, um, but this is all mangled obviously. So there's a bumper support or headlight bracket thing there that's broken, whatever that is. So that looks like it's actually attached to the um, inner tub and then all of this is all bent. The chassis rail itself looks pretty straight, but this little extension is buggered. And then all of this has been pushed in a bit as well, which has like rotated this underneath a little bit, which possibly could have lifted this guy up. So all this corner is like down and in. So I'd say that's why it's written off because it is like all the panels on the chassis rail. So you'd have to take all those panels off, replace it all um, from pretty much the strut tower forwards. And that's probably gonna cost you more than the car's worth. So. That's why she's a write-off. And then once you add in all the um, condensers, probably a radiator, which I haven't looked at yet, then that front support, all the uh, brackets underneath, haven't even looked to see if it's touching the engine yet. So there's obviously a fair bit of mess. So that'd be why it was a write-off and why it cost me uh, about 1200 bucks by the time I got it home. So it's pretty good. Um, got all of the running gear that I needed and a whole bunch of parts for Inns car. Um, I keep saying that I have the running gear for a reason, and the reason may be on camera, um, we'll see, but it's not going to be anytime soon, I don't think, so I'll just strip this down a bit more and just keep looking, see if I can find any more damage. Alright, I got the crash support Rio 
out, got the aircon condenser out, and you can see a bit more of that damage. This definitely has a lot of Ks on it. So the car has 250,000. I imagine that radiator probably does as well. Um, so the bottom pin is broken off the radiator, which means it's probably not holding coolant. Then all of this bottom frame is bent. So I don't think that's attached to the subframe. That'd be like the front lower rad support. And I don't think this is broken at this stage. I don't think the actual rail is bent, but there is like some brackets that are bent and then all of that stuff that I mentioned before. And then from this angle, you can actually see the top radiator support bends up and down again. And then all of this has been pushed down. So it's actually pretty bent all the way across the top. All right, so I'll get this radiator out now that I know that it's probably broken down the bottom here. And then we'll see if we can find any more damage. And then that'll probably do us for today. All right, so the next layer is off. Radiator and fans, quite bent, definitely leaking. And then this front rail thing is also pretty smashed. So. I'll see if that's removable. I think it might be welded on, so I'll give it a go. But what I was looking for was to make sure that that cross member wasn't bent, which it doesn't seem to be. So that's pretty awesome. So I'll try and get this thing out of the way. It's probably welded on and I'll probably cut it off later, but we'll see how we go. Other than that, nothing really seems to be damaged. All the plugs are coming off nicely. The aircon was split at some somewhere. So there was no pressure in that. But other than that, everything I need is pretty much good. So that's really good. All right, I'm gonna call it there for today. So I've got it all pretty much out of the way. Just need to get the reciprocating saw in here and chop that bottom rad support off. Probably try and tidy up some of this so I don't keep catching myself on it. Same on this side, I'll probably cut a lot of this side off. Um, I would cut that side off, but it's holding the bonnet prop and I wanna keep the bonnet on so I can put it down and cover this from the weather when I'm not using it. So I will cut all this away later. Um, but the one last thing I wanted to show you guys is how close this thing was to smashing an airbag sensor. So all of this was supposed to be out of a fair bit further. So it's all been pushed in and somehow missed that airbag sensor entirely, which is excellent. So that's really good because none of the airbags went off. So the rail looks straight, I think. Um, I'm going to cut into this later, but that'll be another episode. All right, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode and the drive down to Mount Gambia, the caves and just the general adventures and the new purchase of more garbage. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next week.